Hi, and thank you for stopping by my channel. A square pillow isn't square. This is the place where you will learn anything and everything you wanted to know about home deck sewing. Today's video is about how to make a shaped hem for your Roman shade. This method is really great for a few reasons. One is that it works no matter what style the body of your shade is in. So if you want to put a decorative hem on a flat Roman shade, on a soft fold or hobbled Roman shade, or on one that has ribs or slats, it doesn't matter. The other reason it's great is because you can make a hem out of the same fabric as the body of your shade, or because it's made it in a, as a separate piece, you can use a complementary or contrasting fabric for your hem. The other nice thing that about this video is that it will show you the technique in making a shaped hem so that no matter what shape you like, no matter how deep you want it to be or wide you need it to be, it'll show you how to make a pattern and how to figure out how to, how to construct your uh, rest of your shade based on your customized hem. For this video, I'm actually going to use the sample shade that I made to do my video about how to make a Roman shade. Um, this one has a flat bottom, as you can see, and I'm literally going to be cutting off the bottom and showing you how to make a new type of hem for it. So when you see the back of this shade, please note that there's going to be some rings sewn on there, some strings hanging around. So just ignore the fact that this is an already mounted and strung shade. Just chopping off the bottom to do a demo. When you're making a shade with a shaped hem, you have to actually think about the hem and how deep it's going to be while you are figuring out what your cuts are and how long your pieces need to be for the shade. Uh, on a normal flat shade, it's very easy to figure out how much fabric you need for your hem. You know that the bottom of your shade is gonna extend below your bottom fold a couple of inches. But on a shaped hem, your hem might extend three, four, five, even six inches below your bottom fold. So the longer and deeper your bottom hem is, the shorter the body of your shade needs to be. So we just gotta figure that out ahead of time. The first thing I do is I wanna make a pattern for my hem. And I start by just taking some pieces of paper so I can play around with pattern making. I usually make these uh, pieces of paper two inches wider than my finished Roman shade is going to be. And vertically, I'll usually start at about 10 inches long. I've never had a hem extend beyond that, so that gives me enough working room. And then I'll draw the finished area of what I need this pattern to be. So that means I will draw a line one inch from each side and half inch from the bottom, which will be my sewing seam allowance. Now, because I want a symmetrical hem, I will usually make my pattern on the fold. So I'll fold it in half wrong sides together so I still see my marks. And I'm just going to start playing around with shapes. I'm going to try drawing some different shapes, figure out which one I want. And then when I've got it figured out, I will cut the shape out, making sure that I leave uh, room for my seam allowances. Once I've got it cut out, I will open it up and I will just make sure I like the way it looks. I mean, at this point, if there's, you want to make your curve a little bigger, a little smaller, there's something you don't like, now is the time where you can change that. Now, a quick tip, if you are doing something like scallops where you want an uneven number of scallops, so in my case, I'm going to do a little sample pattern here with three scallops. Um, can't really do that on the fold, so I'll divide my pattern into thirds and find the center of each third and either use a compass or find anything around the house that has the a dinner plate, a glass, anything that has a circular shape to it that I like how it looks, and I will just trace that into the middle of each of my sections, making sure I've added seam allowances to my original drawing line before I cut it out. Okay, we have our pattern. So the next step is determining how much fabric we need for the finished depth of our decorative hem. When your shade is pulled up and that bottom fold covers part of your, your hem like this, I like to make sure that I have at least an inch, sometimes more, above the beginning of my decorative hem so it doesn't look too cramped or I don't cut any of it off. So in the case of this particular shaped hem, 
I want to write down this first number, the distance between the part I want to start showing and the bottom of the pattern. So I'm going to start with three inches on this one. The next number has to do with the distance between your rings on the back. My rings are generally about eight inches apart, which means when this shade is lifted, my folds are about four inches. We have to take into account the depth of that fold. So the next number you have to write down is half the distance of your ring spacing. In my case, that's going to be four inches. And the last thing I will add is an allowance for a rod pocket on the back. And you can see where my rod pocket's going to be by where I have folded and pinned the top of the hem. So to determine the cut size of your decorative hem fabric, add together the deepest part of your visible design once your shade is lifted, add half of your ring spacing to that, and then an allowance for your rod pocket for your weight rod. So in the case of my little sample here, I am going to start with three inches. I'm going to add half my ring spacing, which is four inches. And I'm going to just add one and a half inches for a small uh, weight rod pocket. I'm using a really small rod on this. Um, just adjust your pocket allowance for however big your weight rod's going to be. Now that you've figured out exactly how deep your decorative hem is going to be, it's easy to figure out how big the body of your shade is going to be above your hem. All you have to do is take the overall finish length of your shade, subtract the depth of your decorative hem, and the difference is the length of the body of your shade. I always add a few extra inches just for a little bit of working room and enough fabric to mount your shade to your mounting board. Um, but in my case, as you can see, my sample shade is 36 inches long. I have determined that my decorative hem is going to be seven inches long when it's finished. Three inches is the amount of fabric that's going to be exposed when it's pulled up, and four inches is going to be the distance that that first fold is going to cover. That gives me a total of seven inches. So my shade body is going to finish at 29 inches long. All right, and now we can start making our hem and our shade body. Um, if you don't know how to make a Roman shade, a flat Roman shade, I have a video on my channel about how to make a Roman shade. And you're just going to want to get yours to the point where your face fabric and lining are finished, like you see in this photo. Um, obviously, uh, we're not, as I mentioned earlier, we're not worrying about sewing rings on or stringing it or mounting it yet. You just want your shade body made with your lining, your face fabric, and your side seams. Make sure your bottom is nice and squared off. And now we're going to make our decorative hem piece. And here I have my cut piece of face fabric, which is my finished shade width plus two inches from side to side. And up and down, I got it by determining the different lengths that I needed in the step prior to this. I've cut one piece of fabric and I've cut one piece of lining. I like to use uh, white lining on the back just so the whole back of my shade um, is white from the outside, but you can use a piece of your decorative fabric on the back if you want to. Now put your lining and face fabric right sides together. Find the middle of your shade and mark it with a pen or a marker. Lay your pattern piece on top of your fabric and line up your centers. Make a note of where the finished points of your shade will be and trace your pattern shape onto your fabric. I like to use a disappearing ink pen or a pencil. And now sew your hem bottom using the line that you drew, the bottom of your uh, pattern as a guide, but remembering that you've already allowed for seam allowances. So I am sewing about a half of an inch in from the drawn line because I allowed about a half inch seam allowance when I made my pattern. Now cut your shape out along the line that you drew. You're still going to have that nice seam allowance left. If you have a lot of pretty sharp curves like I do in this one, you may even want to trim your seam allowance to a quarter inch or less and clip your curves so that when you turn it right side out, it lays nice and flat. All right, now just turn it right side out and carefully press your hem. A little tip I like to share is that when I'm pressing the very, very bottom of my hem, 
I like to just kind of roll in the face fabric towards the back just a little bit and that'll ensure that you don't see any white on the bottom edge of your shade. All right, now pull your lining away from your fabric and lay your hem and your shade right sides together like you see here. And we're going to draw a line where your allowance is for your pocket. In my case, I allowed one and a half inches for my pocket allowance, so I'm just going to draw a line at one and a half inches. You can double check and make sure that that is actually going to give you the exact finish length of your hem that you're planning on or make any minor adjustments at that point to get your hem the finish length you determined. And pin that in place and take it to your sewing machine and just sew right along that line that you just drew. Now press down your hem, pressing your seam allowances toward the bottom as you see here. Now turn your shade over and we're going to press in our side seams. Want to make sure they're nice and straight and even all the way down. And now fold up your bottom hem. If you see that your lining is showing from the front of the shade, just make an adjustment on that lining side hem and um, take it in a little bit more so that it doesn't show from the front. And now we're going to press in our top hem of the shade lining to make our pocket. I like to adjust this just a little bit so that my lining extends beyond that stitching line where I sewed the hem onto the front of the fabric. Um, the reason I do that is because I will pin it in place and then I'm going to stitch right in that seam where the hem and the uh, shade meet, meet each other. And just by extending that lining a little beyond that, it makes it easier for me to catch it in when I'm sewing. And the last step to sewing this on is I'm going to now drop down below that first seam and I'm going to sew the bottom of my rod pocket. Um, I'm doing this just with cream colored thread so you can see it easier, but normally I try to either use invisible thread or matching thread to the fabric so the stitching line is not visible. Now just sew on your ring starting at the very top of your decorative hem as you see here. And now you'll just sew on your rings put on your strings and board mount it. If you are interested in making Roman shades, I have several other videos on my channel at this time with more to come. This particular one is really helpful if you're just getting into it. It's called seven tips to know before you sew a Roman shade. I also have basic Roman shade fabrication showing that you can actually hang a Roman shade from a decorative rod how to measure and install for a Roman shade, and also the fastest and easiest way to sew on Roman shade rings. I hope you found this video easy to follow and helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them uh, in the comment section below. I'm pretty good at getting back and responding. Thank you so much for watching my videos. Have a great day and happy sewing.